Hi, 7th grade. Welcome back. Uh, today is Thursday, and we're going to continue working on Leonardo da Vinci. We're going to go over um, a, a couple documents, two documents, and then uh, two short videos. Hopefully, the video from today's are not blocked by YouTube, um, because that happened yesterday. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over this document. This is Da Vinci. Please follow along carefully. One suggestion that I have is that if you can, you should have a notebook where you are taking notes of the major points that I make, okay? Uh, da Vinci, so this is the Vitruvian Man. Um, it's a good example of Da Vinci's use of the study of anatomy to be able to understand the human body, right? Vitruvian Man is a really famous uh, painting. This is a study of horses. You're able to see the clear outline of the muscles of the horse, okay? And this is the most famous painting, the Mona Lisa. All of these are secular pieces. Secular means non-religious. So that's something you should have made a note about, right? Uh, if you're writing on your notebook, you should say secular means non-religious, right? Vitruvian man is non-religious. Study of horse is non-religious. Mona Lisa is non-religious. Uh, and there's a couple more. Uh, so let's go. Let's start with this. Da Vinci, and this is, this is going to be a lot of the same things that we did on Wednesday. But we're going to go into a little more detail. Da Vinci has become known as one of the best examples of Renaissance man. Renaissance man. A Renaissance man is a term that describes what many artists were doing during the Renaissance. So not every artist in the Renaissance is considered a Renaissance man. This is kind of misleading. A Renaissance man, here's another note that you should probably make a note of. A Renaissance man is a person that is good at many skills. So Da Vinci was studying science, technology, arts. He was doing sculpture. He was a mathematician. He studied plants. He studied birds. He studied flights. So he was involved in many different aspects. So that's what makes him a Renaissance man. Da Vinci was born in Florence, uh, area of Italy in the 1400s. At the time, Florence was a center of the Renaissance beginning. So as a result of him being born in the in the in, in in Florence, that definitely impacted his upbringing. That impacted what he what he was able to see. It's kind of like being born today in Silicon Valley, in the Bay Area. You're going to be impacted by technology, right? Or being born in LA, uh, and you know a lot of people that are in the movie business, right? You might be impacted by that. So Da Vinci was impacted by the Renaissance happening when he was born. Florence had been. Florence had been in the dark ages for many years, but by the time Da Vinci was born, life had settled down and enough people had time to learn about the ancient arts and sciences. This has to do, this is the classical period. People were inspired to try these things on their own and a whole new age of learning began. Before the Renaissance, painting was very religious, right? Painting was very religious. Most painting was controlled by the Catholic Church, by the church. And you'll see that... Um, Painting was was it was a tool to teach people about religion, right? So painting was not the most realistic because when you painted an image, the most important people tended to be bigger. Most uh, most were done in iconic style, meaning the painters wanted people to focus more on religion behind the painting rather than the artistry. So the focus of painting was, or the focus of painting and sculpture was the message, not necessarily the actual paint or the actual work of art. However, Da Vinci has studied Greek and Roman arts and wanted to make art in similar style. So he wanted to create art that was similar to the Greeks and the Romans. Okay? And wanted people to and wanted to make art in a similar style. Greek and Roman art was very realistic or more realistic than than medieval art and was inspired by scientific study. So Art of the, of the classical period was more realistic because it was based more on scientific study. Da Vinci took it one step further. When he painted human figures, even in clothes, he would start by drawing the skeleton. So he would draw the skeleton first, then the body over that, then finishing the painting, right? So he would start with, 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 the, with the skeleton and then add the, the muscles and then add the skin. His paintings and drawings of people were very realistic. So his paintings, like as you can see with this one, looks like a real person, right? Even the even the even the bags under the eyes look real. Okay. Sorry, Mona Lisa. Oops. Uh, moving on. Uh, 
his most famous drawing, the Vitruvian Man, this is the Vitruvian Man, is one of the first examples of someone trying to map out the proportions of the human body. So you see here, the, um, the arms are, this, are, are, are a certain length as compared to the legs, okay? Um, so it's not like his arms are huge or his head is too big or his legs are too big. It's proportional. Accurate perspective. Accurate perspective. Remember, perspective means depth, right? Was another part of painting in the medieval that medieval art ignored. Da Vinci discovered a way of painting that showed depth. But he wasn't the first one. If something is far away, it looks very small. Medieval art was not very good at showing objects that were far away. So this is very different than the, the Renaissance. Through, care, through careful observation, Da Vinci was able to paint backgrounds in a way that looked realistic. Kind of like the Mona Lisa here. Right, you're able to see the background looks much more realistic, right? You're able to see, even though these mountains are huge, they, they are small in, in, this, in this because they are far away from the viewer, us, whoever is observing. Uh, da Vinci used curiosity. This is one of the things that defines Da Vinci. Uh, being curious, right? And asking questions. And attention to detail, he showed in his arts and other areas as well. Da Vinci used the curiosity and attention to detail he showed in his arts in other areas as well. He was also a great scientist, mathematician, engineer, and many other things. Uh, and that's what makes him a Renaissance man because he was skilled at many different uh, aspects. He drew many plants from machines that, are, that we now use, like helicopters and tanks. Now, do they look exactly the way Da Vinci drew them? No, absolutely not. They're, they're different, right? But he had the foresight or... Uh, the ideas that were 500 years in the making. Science and art were very closely linked during the Renaissance and were especially close in Da Vinci's mind. Both require a great imagination and curiosity about what is real and what could be possible. That's why, uh, as a parent, I always tell my kids to always ask questions, right? Uh, my son asks, you know, where does, where does electricity come from? Uh, my daughter asks, why is the sky blue? Um, my son asked a couple other questions, right? Always ask questions, right? Uh, as kids, we tend to ask a lot of questions and that tends to disappear as we, we grow up. And that's not the way it should be. We should always be pushing ourselves to learn more, okay? We're not gonna do this, but if we were gonna do this, um, this is when you draw a, you, you, if you wanna do it, you're more than welcome to do it and take a picture and send it to me. Da Vinci is well known for his careful observation and research of the natural world. Many of his paintings and drawings were based on his findings. So the task is find a leaf outside and look at it very, care at it very carefully. Try and find all the veins and, uh, and, the, and stems in it and pay attention to its shape. After you have looked at it, try to draw it. If you want to do that, please let me, please take a picture, send it to me. This text is pretty short too. Uh, again, a lot of it is going to be the same, but I just want to go over it, okay? Da Vinci was born in uh, 1452 to near the village of Vinci. That's where, he, that's where the term comes from, of Vinci. He lived during the Renaissance. Renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. Remember, re rebirth or, or reawakening of the classical period. The Renaissance period from 1450, some places earlier, was a time of exciting ideas, exploration, and creativity. So during the Renaissance, the new world is discovered by the Europeans in Europe. Da Vinci did not attend school but learned reading, writing, and math from a priest. From the time he was a child, Da Vinci was very interested in nature. So this is what drives him, right? Understanding why birds fly and how, what's the, what's the mechanism that, that allows them to fly and not humans. He constantly makes sketches of birds, animals, plants, and rocks. When Da Vinci was still a child, he moved to the city of Florence. Huge. As a teenager, he became a, an apprentice to a famous sculptor, Verrocchio, uh, an artist. An apprentice learns a trade from a, master, from a maestro or a master. Artisan. Nardo's first job as an apprentice was cleaning. Then he learned how to make paints and brushes. In his free time, he kept on sketching. Eventually, Leonardo was assigned painting jobs and graduated from apprenticeship to journeyman. Da Vinci experimented with oils, which were new to Italy. He did not want to paint flat-looking pictures, like other artists did. He wanted his paintings to look real. In order for them to look real, you have to understand the human body, and you have to understand perspective. To do this, he studied light and shadow and perspective, the way things look at a distance. An object that is far away will appear smaller than a close object. People were amazed of how real Da Vinci's paintings looked. By the time he was 20, Da Vinci was a maestro too, a master. 
His work was popular with the ruler of Florence, who hired Leonardo to create elaborate, complex decorations for carnivals and parties. Da Vinci also started painting religious scenes. So Da Vinci did paint secular scenes, right? He did paint things, paintings like the Mona Lisa, which is a secular piece, but he also did religious works like the Last Supper. Later, Leonardo moved to a city of Milan, Italy, and worked as a military engineer. His sketchbooks were filled with ideas for many inventions, including designs for a helicopter, a bicycle, and a parachute. He also studied the anatomy of the human body. This helped him to paint realistic portraits and even led him to discover facts about diseases. Very few of Da Vinci's works still exist today, but those works are very well known. One is called The Last Supper. It is a picture of Christ with the 12 disciples painted on the wall of a church dining room. Another is called the Mona Lisa, this one, famous for his mysterious smile of the woman featured in the painting. This painting now hangs in the Louvre, a French museum. Uh, war forced Leonardo to leave Milan for a time, and eventually he ended up in France, serving as an artist in residence with the King of France. He died in 1519 at the age of 67. He is remembered today as a Renaissance man. Uh, so these questions are going to appear on Ed Puzzle. Da Vinci was born in, was born in the United States, France, Rome, Italy. Nardo became to a famous sculpture and artist. So these are pretty straightforward questions. Nardo lived during a period of time called the... What was the name of the painting Nardo painted of Christ with his disciples? Which of the following describes an important feature of Da Vinci's paintings? Which of the following is not true? Nardo is remembered as... Imagine you have ch you have to choose a profession like Leonardo did. Which profession would you choose? How would you decide? It doesn't have to be a profession that... It doesn't have to be one of the things that Da Vinci was interested in. This is pretty much asking, what is it that you want to do when you grow up? Uh, we're not going to do this one. Uh, this one you will do. So you're going to do that, that one and this one. And not this one. Okay. So let's watch these short videos. Hopefully they're not blocked because if they are, we're going to have a problem. The Mona Lisa, The Last Supper, The Vitruvian Man, just a few of the iconic works that made Leonardo da Vinci one of the most famous artists in history. But da Vinci was also a scientist, architect, sculptor, musician, engineer, and inventor who once said, the knowledge of all things is possible. His boundless curiosity and achievements are the reasons da Vinci is still recognized as the ideal Renaissance man. Leonardo da Vinci was born an illegitimate child in the province of Vinci, Italy, on April 15, 1452. At 15, he apprenticed under the famous painter Verrocchio in Florence. There, he refined his skills and adapted his trademarks for motto or smoky technique, which avoids harsh outlines. So, sumato simply means um, like the blending of, of, of the figure. Here, you see the eye, you see the shading on the left of the, on the, left of the eye, your left. You see right over the, on, on the right side, that's fumato. It's this smokiness that provides this perspective. You're able to see the, almost the eyelid. This technique gives da Vinci's paintings a unique depth. Eventually, he surpassed Verrocchio himself, who allegedly vowed never to pick up a paintbrush again after teaching the young Leonardo. In 1482, da Vinci became a professional painter in Milan. He completed the Virgin of the Rock. Again, this is the sfumato. You see the light and dark. Um, that's sfumato. That's also chiaroscuro, which means light and dark. Both of these combined create images that are very realistic. And, and it the brings Last the Supper together. shortly after his arrival. For The Last Supper, da Vinci used a new Renaissance technique called perspective that brought new realism to paintings by making distant objects smaller than those closest to the viewer. Da Vinci draws the viewer's eye to the space above Jesus, which gives it the illusion of great space and depth. During his 17 years in Milan, Da Vinci finished only six paintings. Instead, he focused on various scientific studies. Da Vinci said, learning never exhausts the mind. 
he kept track of his ideas with meticulous illustrations and entries in a series of notebooks. One inter interesting thing about Da Vinci is that he wrote uh, backwards. So he wrote uh, in mirror script. So in order to understand what he writes, you have to put a mirror in front of it and then see the, look at the mirror. You'll be able to read it then. And I believe his is in Italian. These notebooks reveal Da Vinci's true genius. Da Vinci drew plans for everything from churches and fortresses to water systems and bridges. For the Duke of Milan, he designed advanced weapons, including a tank and machine gun. Da Vinci's fascination with flight produced sketches for flying machines centuries before the first airplane was built. Da Vinci's interest in human anatomy was expressed in the Vitruvian Man, a drawing that explains the proportions of the human body. His study of anatomy brought a gripping realism to his paintings, especially the Mona Lisa, or La Gioconda, the Laughing One, which he finished around 1507. Fellow Renaissance painter Giorgio Vasari said that the Mona Lisa's smile was so pleasing that it seemed divine rather than human, and those who saw it were amazed to find that it was as alive as the original. Da Vinci's fame never subsided, even after his death in 1519. Crowds still wait in line to see the Mona Lisa at the Louvre Museum in France just as writers, scientists, and historians continue to study his works and marvel at his genius. Da Vinci's advice for the development of a complete mind was study the science of art. Study the art of science. Develop your senses, especially learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. He did not see a divide between art and science and was perhaps one of the most diversely talented people who ever lived. It is for this reason that many call Leonardo da Vinci the first Renaissance man. It's that one. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to watch this whole one. The painting Salvador Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci could fetch $100 million at auction next month. Just one part of his rich legacy. Our cover story is from Dr. John LaPook. They packed this gallery at the Louvre in Paris, at least six million people a year, for a glimpse at a superstar. But a select few, like author Walter Isaacson, actually appreciate the Mona Lisa as art. It's the most famous painting in the world. And when you stand before it at the Louvre... So this person that's talking right now, he's the one that wrote a uh, biography of Da Vinci. I read his book about, um, like, four years ago. It's uh, I didn't read it. I heard it on, on, on CD. Um, and he studies a lot of Da Vinci's uh, um, skills. You all of a sudden realize why. It's the most emotional painting. So she's been a celebrity for 500 years. <laughs> We know a lot more about the celebrity artist who painted her than we do about Mona Lisa herself. Largely because her creator, Leonardo da Vinci, documented his life's work in painstaking detail. Some 7,200 pages of scribbles and sketches survive. You know, Leonardo may have been the person with the greatest amount of curiosity of any human who ever existed. And he would make lists in his notebooks of things he wanted to know. Like, how do they walk on ice in Holland? Or describe the tongue of the woodpecker. Now, who in the world would wake up one morning and put on their to-do list, describe the tongue of the woodpecker? What use is it? But there it is, and over and over again, Leonardo is just putting down in his notebook things he's curious about. This is the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. This Walter Isaacson's curiosity has given us best-selling books about Albert Einstein and Apple's Steve Jobs. And his just-released biography of Leonardo da Vinci published by CBS's Simon & Schuster, will also be a film starring another Leonardo. There's a story that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio has told, which is that when um, his mother was pregnant with him, she was at the Uffizi. There's a wonderful annunciation there. 
looking at the painting, he starts kicking, and the dad says, we're going to name him Leonardo. <laughs> DiCaprio's namesake was born out of wedlock in Florence in 1452. With little formal schooling, he was apprenticed at age 14 to an engineer and artist, and Leonardo's skill and imagination flourished. Florence was very tolerant of a guy like Leonardo, who was left-handed and gay and vegetarian and illegitimate. And it seems, quite a hunk. Leonardo was also incredibly good-looking, in very good shape, extraordinarily athletic, long curling hair. And I think that Vitruvian man, the guy in the circle in the square, spread eagle, I think it's partly a self-portrait. But perhaps most of all, Leonardo was stunningly inventive. He makes a portable bridge, which you can just pop up in the middle of a, a battle if you have to cross a river. The Aspen Institute, the nonprofit think tank Isaacson helped to shape for many years, recently held a celebration of all things Leonardo on its Colorado campus. Glider, and he did it in Milan off one of the... Sketches were transformed into three-dimensional models. The famous helicopter. I think it was first designed for the theater, because he was doing all these amazing props, having people fly and descend and ascend on the stage an underwater diving apparatus. He said it would be a great way to sort of attack ships. In fact, he kept secret some of the details for fear that the enemies could figure it out. But it's Leonardo's sketches that may set him apart. OK, this is the big moment. Right? <laughs> now so valuable that when curators at New York's Metropolitan Museum agreed to give us a peek. I'm actually nervous. Oh, my goodness. At first, they would only show us copies until we promised to limit exposure to our television lights. You know, when I saw these for the first time, it's like, oh my goodness, there's a hand of the artist. And it's just as if he were making it in front of me. Every time you see it, there's a new layer to appreciate. Here's the head of a man in profile. Okay. Whose hard lemonade seltzer is this? Looks so crisp and refreshing. Sorry, it's guys. Mike's. Mike who? File. This is a design for a stage setting. A bear walking and the head of the Virgin. Something's happening here. Something's caught her eye. She has turned her head. It's a study for many paintings he would uh, do later, but you realize that he didn't just love objects. He understands how human movements reflect the emotions of the mind. Only one Leonardo painting is in the collection of an American museum this portrait of Ginevra da Benci at the National Gallery of Art in Washington. How did it help change Renaissance painting? Well, up until then, uh, Renaissance painting had had sort of sharp lines. And Leonardo said, that's not the way nature works. So there's a smokiness to the lines. But the great thing about this picture is you see a young Leonardo who's on the path to painting the Mona Lisa. But this isn't the Mona Lisa. There's something else uniquely da Vinci about this portrait. Leonardo cared even about the parts unseen, so he paints the back of Ginevra da Vinci. We realize and he still has more to teach us. Leonardo even taught himself anatomy with dozens of human dissections. He documented how the aortic valve in the heart works, something researchers only confirmed in recent years. And then there's his knowledge of the eye. Mm. He realized that the center, when you're staring at something, you see the detail. And if you're slightly off, it goes to a different part of the retina. The harder you look directly at the Mona Lisa's lips, the more it looks like her lips are turned down. But as your eyes wander, she starts smiling at you. So it flickers. I couldn't help thinking when you described that. Did Leonardo da Vinci figure out a way to have a painting flirt with yes. the viewer? Yes. He figured out a way to have it interact. In the Mona Lisa, you see the combination of all of Leonardo's anatomy and science with his art. And what better way to discuss what may be this son of Florence's ultimate accomplishment, the Last Supper, than over an Italian meal? It begins with Jesus saying, one of you shall betray me. And you watch it. It's Here he's talking about the scene. Almost like a wave, it reverberates out.
Emotion, spirituality, and drama make this fresco one of the world's most admired works of art, studied down to the tiniest detail, which is how we discovered what may be the origin of one of our most familiar superstitions, a cause of bad luck. It is certainly one of the greatest biblical moments ever, which is Judas knocking over the salt in that painting. I didn't realize that. Is that where the superstition comes? Oh, yeah. Uh, that yeah, you yeah, knock yeah. over salt? Yeah. And you can see the salt cellar. You can see everything. The artist, engineer, and scientist who lived a life of boundless curiosity died in 1519. He was 67. I hope you learned something about Da Vinci today. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, we're going to start working on... We're going to finish Da Vinci, we're going to be working on a study guide for your assessment, or I might give you work that you'll be finishing on the break. I'll see you guys later. Bye.